Hello, I'm Miss Linnea Lark, and today I'm going to teach you how to use two-point perspective to draw realistic three-dimensional shapes onto a flat or two-dimensional paper. In this video, I will teach you step-by-step -step how to execute two-point perspective. I will also show you examples and explain the math behind the magic. Make sure you are watching closely. I will tell you when it's safe to pause the video and look away. You will also see a golden pause button in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. In order to start drawing fantastical buildings and layered scenes, we need to start with the basic understanding of two-point perspective. We're going to learn how to use our tools accurately and with good craftsmanship, how the rules of two-point perspective work, and how to simplify buildings and structures into basic shapes. Here are the tools you'll need to get started. You'll need some paper. While drawing your image, make sure to keep your paper 100% on the tabletop. This will prevent bends and rips as long as your table is clean and flat. A sharp or mechanical pencil. The sharper the pencil, the more accuracy you'll be able to draw with. When using a pencil against your ruler, be sure to hold the pencil at the angle that allows your pencil point to get as close to the edge as possible, wooden pencils especially. You'll need an eraser. The two qualities I look for in my favorite erasers for perspective is that they actually erase and that they have sharp edges so I can erase in tight areas without accidentally erasing my hard work. I love this black Pentel eraser and I also love their white eraser caps. Then you'll need a ruler. This is the ruler of my art teacher dreams. Here's what I love about it. It's transparent so you can see your drawing through it. It's 18 inches long and I rarely need a longer ruler. And it's three inches wide. This allows me to line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the paper, making it easy to find 90 degree angles and even easier to draw truly vertical lines. And lastly, I love that there's a grid printed on the face of the ruler that allows me to keep lines straight. When using my ruler, I hold it firmly with an L grip in the middle of the ruler. This will keep the ruler from sliding out beneath you, making not straight lines. When drawing lines with a ruler, I like to pivot for precision. Perspective is a mathematical approach to drawing. It requires accuracy and precision, and so I pivot for precision. Make sure that you're lining up your two points with the same side of the ruler. I see this mistake often where kids will line up one point on one side of the ruler and then line it up with the other point on the other side of the ruler. Make sure that your points are matching up on the same side of the ruler. Let me show you. Let's say you want to connect all these blue dots to the same pink dot, but all of those blue lines must intersect the pink dot at the exact same point. I will place the tip of my pencil at that precise pink point and then pivot my ruler out to each of those blue dots, connecting them with a line. Watch me pivot for precision. The last tool is optional. I sometimes use a paintbrush or a mini dusting brush to dust away my eraser gunk if I'm worried about smudging my drawing. Go ahead and assemble all your tools now. Alright, now that we have all our tools together, let's get into the rules of two-point perspective. Two-point perspective is a corner view of a building or scene. This means that the corner of the building would be closer to the viewer than one of its walls or sides. Notice that in a two-point perspective view, both sides of the building are angled and appear as though the walls are getting smaller the further away they get. Those sides are converging toward the vanishing point. The first thing we'll need to do is draw a horizon line. In nature, the horizon line is the horizontal line that separates the sky from the earth, and that holds true in perspective as long as your scene takes place on a planet, outside, and in a world that has gravity. But the horizon line takes on another very important role in perspective. It also represents the direct eye line of the viewer. What that means to us is that when objects, buildings, or structures are below the horizon line, we will be able to see the top of that object. If the object goes through the horizon line, taking up both space above and below the horizon line, we'll not be able to see the top or the bottom of the object, just its front. And if the object is above the horizon line, we will be able to see the front and bottom of the object, but unable to see the top from our vantage point. The horizon line is our direct line of vision, and where the horizon line is on the paper tells us where the viewer is in the scene. When the horizon line is low on our paper, it might feel as though the viewer of the image is low in the world, maybe laying on the ground or having a picnic, looking up at the sky. If the horizon line is very high, it will feel as though the viewer is on a cliff or on top of a building looking down, seeing a lot of earth below them. 
And usually when the horizon line is through the mid-range of the paper, it feels like a regular scene, like how we walk through life, able to see the skies and the earth in equal measure. When choosing where to put your horizon line, the middle of your composition is usually the worst place because it can divide your scene in half and lead the viewer's eye right off the page. I usually choose one of the thirds or somewhere near about. In today's first practice drawing, we are going to go against my advice and put the horizon line in the middle. At this point, we are just trying to learn the rules of perspective and not concerned with the composition or flow of the image. Using the grid on your ruler to line it up with the edge of your paper, you'll draw your horizon line across the middle of your paper. Don't fold your paper, don't actually measure, just guesstimate. If you don't have one of these fancy rulers, line up the edge of your ruler with the side of your paper and then carefully slide it to the middle, doing your best to keep it straight and parallel with the paper's edge. Once you're sure it's not crooked, draw your horizon line. Go ahead and do that now. The next thing we need to do is add our vanishing points. Vanishing points are the points where lines appear to disappear. I showed you this a little bit earlier. In two point perspective, we will need two vanishing points. Here's some vanishing point pro tips. Number one, in two point perspective, vanishing points always go on the horizon line. Number two, place the two vanishing points as far away from each other as possible. The closer your vanishing points are to each other, the more warped your scene will become. So spread them out unless you want a weird fisheye effect. Number three, the larger your vanishing point, the less precise your drawing will be. This may seem like an abstract or small idea right now, but later when your building looks like it could be condemned or like it would collapse if you sneezed inside it and you can't figure out why, don't come crying to me. Check how accurately your lines are hitting your vanishing points. Perspective is all about accuracy. One of the best ways to ensure precision is to have very small vanishing points, but not so small you can't see them. I've got kids that make vanishing points so small they're not even there. Give me a break. You gotta have them. Vanishing points should be small, but also visible. If you really want to get precise, you draw a tiny vertical line for your vanishing point and use the wee bitty place where it crosses your horizon line as your vanishing point. Remember to pivot for precision. Go ahead and draw your vanishing points now. While we're talking about precision, I want to show you the difference between a precise corner and a sloppy corner. A precise corner will have all the lines clearly connected at one exact point, while a sloppy corner has more than one point of connection. Don't be a lazy baby. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all of your mind. Before we start drawing, you need to know that there are two hard and fast rules to two-point perspective. Rule number one, all vertical lines go straight up and down. Rule number two is all horizontal lines go to a vanishing point. We're going to practice these rules drawing basic shapes because every structure starts and can be simplified into a basic shape. While we're looking at these six finished shapes, please note the last and hardest shape we draw is going to be the large see-through one in the middle. So while we are drawing the other five shapes, try to steer clear of the middle area and take note of where and how big I am drawing my shapes. But don't worry, if you run out of space, you can always turn your paper over and use the back. In the top left hand corner, well above the horizon line, we are going to draw our first shape. When drawing a box in two point perspective, always start with the closest vertical line. So I use the grid on my ruler to make sure it's perfectly straight up and down and lined up with the left side of my paper. Remember, we are trying to avoid the middle section of our paper. Do that now. Now that we have the front corner of our box, we need the walls or sides. The sides are made of horizontal lines and all horizontal lines go to a vanishing point. So I take the top and bottom of my vertical lines to both vanishing points. The lines go to the left vanishing point will become the left wall. The lines going to the right vanishing point will become the right wall. Do that now. Right now our walls look like they are going on and on forever. We have to cut them off somewhere. We need the back corners of this box and corners are made of vertical lines. Let's make the left side smaller than the right side. Make sure you keep your ruler straight up and down and parallel with the left side of your paper and cut off the left wall with a vertical line. 
This is very important. As soon as you're finished with a side, you must immediately erase the rest of those guidelines. When you're doing more complex work, you can easily get lost in all of your guidelines if you don't erase them immediately. It is smart to keep your drawing as clean and neat as possible to eliminate confusion. While you're erasing, remember that perspective is all about precision and accuracy. You need to keep your corners nice and crisp and clean. Erase all the way to the corners and be very careful not to accidentally erase those corners. This is why I love the pencil cap erasers for perspective. They are very precise. Do that now. Now let's cut the right wall off with another vertical line and then erase the guidelines. Try to make the right wall a wee bit longer than the left side. Do that now. Okay, so now we have two floating walls. They look like they're floating because they are well above the horizon line. We need to make these walls look like a box. We need to give this box a bottom. In order to close off this box, we need to add two horizontal lines. Remember, all horizontal lines go to a vanishing point. If we took the bottom right corner to the right vanishing point, it wouldn't close off the box at all, so we must take it to the left vanishing point. Then we'll take the left bottom corner to the right vanishing point, totally closing off the bottom. Where those two lines intersect is the bottom back corner. Make sure to erase the guidelines. Do that now. Okay, one box down and five to go. Our next box is going to be in the top right corner of the page. It's going to be high up with a short wall and wide sides, like a box pancake. First, start with the closest vertical line. Remember to keep it on the short side. Do that now. Okay, now we need the walls. We get the walls by taking the top and bottom to both vanishing points. Go ahead. All right, we've got eternal walls. Do you remember how to cut them off? That's right, we'll use vertical straight up and down lines. To make this shape look like a pancake, make sure your side walls are pretty big. Go ahead and draw those two vertical lines. And then remember to erase your guidelines as soon as possible. Go ahead. What part of our box are we missing now? That's right, the bottom. We've got to close this shape off with horizontal lines. Where do all horizontal lines go? To the vanishing point. Remember, when closing a box, make sure you go to the opposite vanishing point. Once you finish, you'll need to erase again. Notice that I accidentally erased my back corner. When you inevitably do this at some point, make sure you use your ruler to fix the mistake so you keep your corners crisp, clean, and precise. Go ahead and erase now. At this point, you should have two floating shapes. Now we're going to draw three tall skinny boxes below the horizon line. Before we begin, notice that all three shapes are different heights and different distances from the horizon line. But since they are all below the horizon line, we will be able to see all of their tops. Also notice that the middle shape, that is farthest from the horizon line, has more of its top visible. The right shape, which is closest to the horizon line, has the smallest top. That is because it is almost out of our vision and so it looks odd or warped or squished. I usually avoid drawing tops and bottoms of shapes too close to the horizon line because of this. But for today, we're gonna try it. And just remember, even though it looks weird, it's still correct. Let's draw our third shape. But this time, you're gonna tell me what to do for each step. Which line do I always draw first? Yes, the closest vertical line. And all vertical lines go straight up and down. Do that now. Okay, now we need our walls. What do we do next? How do we get those walls? You take the top and bottom to the vanishing points. Good, what kind of lines go to the vanishing points? That's right, horizontal lines go to the vanishing point. Draw those walls now. Good, now we have eternal walls. What kind of lines cut off those walls? A vertical line. And all vertical lines go? Stick it straight up and down. They always go straight up and down. Vertical lines go straight up and down. Good job, you. So cut off those walls now. What now? What part of our box are we missing? The top. What kind of lines will close off the top? Horizontal lines. And horizontal lines go where? Yeah, baby, they go to the vanishing point. 
Remember, when closing off a top or bottom, you'll go to which vanishing point? The opposite vanishing point. Good. Do that now. Where the two lines intersect, that's our back what? It's our back corner. Great. The fourth box will go even faster. But remember, this is the one that we want to get pretty close to the horizon line so we can see how warped the top will get. Draw your front vertical line almost all the way to the horizon line and make sure that it's pretty long. Do that now. Take the tops and bottoms to the vanishing points. Cut them off with vertical lines. Erase. Make the top by taking the top corners to the opposite vanishing points, and then erase. Remember, because this one is so close to the horizon line, the top will look a bit squished and warped. Do that now. For the fifth box, I want you to watch the whole process and then do it on your own. Remember to make this one short and far down so that we have room for one more box in the middle later. All right, now that you've watched it happen, go ahead and figure the rest out on your own. Okay, now we are on to the most difficult shape. The reason it is the most difficult is because it's going to be see-through, and that means that if any of our lines aren't accurate or precise, if our vertical lines are crooked and not going straight up and down, if our horizontal lines miss the vanishing points even by a little, or if our corners are not perfect, our math will not check out. So I urge you to be crisp, clean, precise, and accurate. And here we go. Our closest vertical line will go through the horizon line as far as you can go without hitting your other shapes. Go ahead. Take the tops and bottoms to the vanishing points. Cut off the walls with vertical lines, but be sure to make one wall longer than the other. Then erase. Good. Notice that at this point, we've done everything we can that is visible. When a shape is going through the horizon line, we will not be able to see the top or the bottom of the shape. We can only see its walls because it's going through our eye level. But now we're going to make this box invisible, or more like we have x-ray vision and can see the back walls, top and bottom. When drawing invisible walls or lines, you make those lines dotted lines. Let me show you. Let's find the top of our box. In order to do that, we'll take the top corners to the opposite vanishing points. But because we'd have to use x-ray vision to be able to see those lines, we draw dotted lines. Where those lines intersect is our back corner. Once you find the back corner, erase your extra dotted guidelines. Go ahead. Now we need to find our bottom. It's the same thing. With dotted lines, take the bottom corners to the opposite vanishing points. Where they intersect is our back bottom corner. Erase the extra guidelines. Now here's the point where we'll see if our perspective has been precise and accurate. We need our back vertical corner. Line up your ruler with the top back corner and the bottom back corner to find that vertical line. Do that now. If your back corner is perfectly straight up and down a vertical line, then your math checks out. Good job. If your back corner is slightly slanted or grossly crooked, you need to go back and check your work. Check your corners, make sure your lines were going to vanishing points, make sure your vertical lines were all truly straight up and down. Circle any less than perfect corners or edges or lines so that you can learn from your mistakes. And then get another piece of paper or use the back of this one to try it again. You need to make sure that your invisible walls check out before we move on. And then we're all done. Congratulations, you did six shapes in Two Point Perspective. I hope this video has helped you understand the rules and procedures of Two Point Perspective. If you have comments, questions, or requests of what you'd like to learn in Two Point Perspective, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and happy day.